Let's go! Hey reviewers and welcome back to the channel and I hope you guys have been well. And here she is then guys in all of her beauty, the 2022 BMW R1250 GS Adventure in the rally trim. Isn't she an absolute stunner? Now pricing wise, this starts from £19,155 I believe for the rally spec, but you can get the GS uh, in grey I believe for £18,750. I'll pop it up on the screen so you can have a look. But my word, isn't she gorgeous in the rally trim? Absolutely awesome. So obviously when you choose the rally then, um, and this one's a TE, so you've already got most of the toys, but with the rally, you get this absolutely gorgeous paint scheme on here as well. And you do get a slightly lower rally seat, I believe as well. And I think this one's 850 mil and it's 890 for the standard seat. So pretty awesome. Coming down then to have a look at the wheels and tires. Now, with the Rally, of course, you get the choice of gold or black spoked wheels on there. Um, these are obviously the gold ones, and you've got Michelin rubber on there, which is pretty cool. Uh, Brembo four pot calipers on there as well, and it's Brembo front to rear. Uh, disc brake wise, it's a 305 drill disc at the front, or twin drill disc at the front. And at the rear there, and I'll do another cut to it, it's 276, and again, you've got the Brembo caliper on there. Suspension wise, this is the tele lever, and I'll put some bits on the screen so you can have a look. Uh, and because we've gone for the full TE trim here as well, this is semi-active, so electronic suspension if you like, but it's so, so clever. And at times this can be like riding, you know, magic carpet, it's so, so smooth. But put it into dynamic and it will really, really sharpen up. Let's go around to the back so you can have a look there. There you go, and there's your Brembo and your disc there, and shaft drive. Now coming back around to have a look at this engine then. So obviously it probably already needs no introduction but i'm going to give it one anyway so this is a, a flat twin it's a 1254 cc absolute beast of a boxer twin um, it produces 134 horsepower at 8750 rpm and 143 newton meters of torque at just over 6000 so she's an absolute beast right but she pulls like a freight train all the way from 3000 rpm all the way up to the red line pretty much really really cool but it's very smooth as well and you've got balancer shaft in there so although it does have a bit of a characteristic burble and a bit of a bit of a vibe about it as soon as you get going she's lovely and smooth carrying on with suspension and let's just come around here so this is zf shock on there dynamic esa okay so like i mentioned it's fully adjustable um, electronic setup on there or semi-active suspension on there um, and when you use the rider modes which we'll come back to in a minute just here you can basically make the bike you know more taut more forgiving uh, set it up for enduro which is the off-road it's got a special mode for that called enduro funnily enough but you can really set it to suit and if you wanted to go for a fast scratch fast road session you can put it in dynamic as well and everything kind of tightens up and then it really braces and you can really give it the beans. Of course, it's a Euro 5 machine like they all are these days, so you've got ABS, but it's linked ABS as well, okay? So even if you slammed on the back brake or the front brake, this bike can independently brake either one of those using the ABS system, so it's super, super safe. Um, and rest assured, you've got all of the gadgets on this machine, I promise you, absolutely all of them. Being the adventure, of course, you've got all of the protection on here as well and full luggage setup on there as well. Um, you can go for a standard GS and you can drop basically 20 kg in doing so, but I don't know. It depends on what you're going to use it for. I guess if you're more road focused, yeah, go for a standard GS. But if you're going to do any kind of off-roading, then the adventure is definitely the way to go. Now, gearbox wise, this is a six speed, one down, five up setup on there. And you do get shift assist pro on this model. So you've got a quick shifter basically up and down. Um, you do get slip and assist clutch on here as well all of the electronic gadgets you could possibly think of. Seat wise, you can get high low options as well, but basically 890 to 850 is what you're looking at. You can even look at a lower suspension setting option as well. Um, you do get a center stand even on the base model, which is very cool. And rather than bore you to death with the specs, I'm gonna put some of them on the screen now so you can have a look at it. But basically, 
you get a lot of gadgets on the standard trim but moving up to the TE, you get all of the toys and that's definitely, definitely the way to go. I promise you for resale as well, you're gonna to wanna to go for a TE variant, but if you don't go for the TE, you're quite possibly robbing yourself of one of the best experiences on two wheels. Looking up at the controls then, yeah, you've got quite a lot on here. It's quite busy to be fair. So you've got daytime running lights and fogs on there. You've got adjustment for your semi-active suspension. You can turn off your traction control fully. This is how you're going to navigate your menu system, cruise control. Uh, you've got your flash up here as well. This is your scroll wheel for the system. So I'm going to show you that in a second. Indicators and obviously your horn. Moving over to the right hand side then, this is your SOS switch. So your emergency call if you need it. Hopefully you'll never need to use that. It is optional, it's not standard on all models. Um, heated grips, these can be so good, they can literally melt your hands, you become part of the bike. That's your switchable rider modes here as well, and of course your kill switch and ignition. Now, like I said, you know, the brakes are absolutely awesome. You've got full braided line set up on there as well. Um, these Brembos, they're so, so good. And I've tested them not only on other GSs before, but also a similar setup on my XR. And they are really, really awesome, guys. I've never, ever, ever seen ABS flash up or anything like that. And I've pushed the bikes quite hard at times as well. Uh, we'll do a brake test on the ride as well. So stay tuned for that one. And obviously we're gonna do a mixture of different roads and riding conditions. Tank wise, it's 30 liters with a four liter reserve, I believe as well. Um, this model has got the keyless ride as well. So we don't need to have a physical key to put into here to keep it in your pocket, but don't forget it. And of course you can open this up as well. Little cubby hole. Don't forget if you leave your keys in there though, right? because um, yeah, someone could literally come up to the bike and do this and then off they go on your lovely shiny machine. So that brings us onto this awesome TFT. Now I'm gonna put some of the specs on the screen, but basically look, it's state of the art, okay? Um, on the screen, this is your basic mode here. You've got tachometer, speedometer, riding mode. Down here, you've got heated seats, heated grips, uh, automatic lighting, time, and all the rest of it. And you control that from here and using this scroll wheel, okay? So I'm gonna show you how it works. Push the menu button. I'm just gonna push down. Now using this scroll wheel, if I'm just gonna go left or right like this, it's gonna change it on here, okay? So here we go. My vehicle, I'm gonna dip into it really quickly. You push down on that menu. There's your my vehicle. Across, there's your trip. Tire pressure monitoring, this one's got that. And service requirements, push up on the menu button and across. Now navigation, so you can get a proper Navi 6 unit, I think they call it now, if you want to. But you can also pair it with your phone, right? So iOS or Android, using the BMW connected app and you can have turn by turn navigation and music and obviously communications. Go into settings here and I'm not gonna bore you to death. I might do a deep dive if enough of you want it, so let me know. But if you go into vehicle settings, here's where you can customize the bike to suit, okay? So lighting, traction control amongst other things. Going back out and down again, you've got system settings, connections, and display information. Again, you can kind of lose yourself in all these things, but rest assured, you've got so, so much on here. Right, something I do want to show you though, let's just go back into here. And then down to driving mode pre-selection, I'm going to go into that one. So with this bike then, you've got a variety of riding modes that you can switch at the touch of a button. Eco is economy, uh, I'm not going to bore you to death with it. When you put it into that, it reduces the power and torque and you get an economy bar up there. You've probably seen it in your car before. Um, rain mode is exactly what it says on the tin. So you've got reduced torque and of course it's ride by wire. So it works with a six axis IMU and the conditions of the road to make it safe. Road is basically a jack of all trades. So you've got full power um, and it's really smooth actually. Dynamic is what it kind of says, that's the sharpened up version. Dynamic Pro, this is for faster enthusiastic riding or even track of course as well. Um, the Enduro side of it, now that's gonna be for off-road and Enduro Pro again is customizable. So I won't go into all of that today, but if you'd like to know more and you wanna see a deep dive, let me know. But LED lighting all round, and of course these are all adaptive and they do look absolutely beautiful. In fact, when you switch the bike on, these kind of tilt up and down, so it's really awesome. We've got the spot lamps on here as well. So there she is, guys, 2022 BMW R1250 GS Adventure Rally Trim. Without further ado, let's go. So oh, look at that. That is beautiful. Right then, reviewers, I hope you enjoyed that walk around. As you might see, a bit of a jump in location. I came up to Devil's Dyke because this is where I wanted to start the ride from. And yeah, look, we've got a beautiful bit of weather here. We've got some dangerous looking weather here. So without further ado, 
let's get into the ride. Right, so as you would have seen, obviously this one's got the keyless ride because this one is a TE variant, so it's all keyless. Press the button, and there's a logo. Beautiful. <laughs> Now, let's see if we can maneuver this. <laughs> Look at that turning circle. Yes, come on, son. Hit me with your power. <laughs> let's get out of here. Woo. <laughs> oh, I tell you, I have missed being on. The GS. I'm not going to lie, I kind of miss my BMW as well. <laughs> but don't worry, I'm not going to be changing back. We've got lots planned for the Z. Lots planned for the Z. But yeah, these are lovely though. I kind of forgot just how lovely they are. Premium experience and all the gadgetries. BMW. There you go. They should sponsor me, guys. They should sponsor me. Look at this today. Oh man, we've got a lovely break in the weather, absolutely awesome. So what we're going to do then guys, I'm going to try and keep it into sections for you, but basically on this ride we're going to cover um, obviously the handling and comfort, uh, we're going to cover the braking, we're going to cover the electronics and obviously engine as well. Um, for the braking I will be doing a stop test as well, um, nothing crazy, uh, nothing dangerous I hope. Uh, but just to give you a feel for the brakes, because they are Brembo and these are all braided as well, so I've got a really good setup. Spoiler alert, they're good, but yeah, you'll see on the right. Now, throughout the video, if you get any questions, anything that kind of pops to mind, don't forget to you know let me know in the comments section and obviously give it a like while you're there. Um, and I'll make sure I come back to you. So any questions in the comments section, whack them in there. So right, just setting off there, let's cover things like the comfort before we get into any of the cooler stuff. So comfort wise, I'm a big guy, as you know, six foot four, so big and tall. And for me, yeah, this is like tailor made, right? It's absolutely gorgeous. The GS is just perfect for the big guys. Now, of course, as well, you've got lower suspension options and you've got low seat options as well. Uh, as you would have noticed on the walk around, this one is a rally uh, and I believe the seat is 850 mil. I've not measured it, but I think it's 850. Um, of course she's a bit of a tall bike but once you get on her as well um, the suspension kind of gives a little bit and it settles into that perfect position because you know telelever and all the rest of it it's just a gorgeous gorgeous setup but it's not too bad for for shorter riders is what i'm trying to say you know you've got options taller riders absolutely perfect now of course i've got long arms being a tall guy and uh, for me the reach is excellent um i would say it's fairly neutral you know you've kind of got the bars back a little bit but um you know it's it's a really great position really really comfortable let's let this fellow past nice sounding <laughs> yeah we're making a video so i can't go play <laughs> but yeah comfort wise absolutely spot on the ergonomics you know absolutely awesome now i mentioned as well of course you can get the heated seats uh, and obviously you've got heated grips on here as well um this version this bike's got all of those things on there and the heated grips, if you've not tried them from BMW before, they are super efficient. They will melt your hands comfortably in no time. Um, I don't mean that they're dangerous, of course. I just mean that they work really, really well. And of course, you can just push that button here and that's going to bring up your heating there. Then you use the scroll wheel, click into it, and then up we go. Up to five settings there, five levels. There's three. In fact, we'll whack it on that one for now. And then we just back out of the system nice and easy. We can control the seat heating in a similar way as well. So yeah, ergonomics and comfort, absolutely spot on. Really, really like it. Um, gadgetry wise then, yeah, of course, we've got cruise control. We've got dynamic uh, rider modes on there as well, which can be selected just from over here. And I'll show you those in a minute. Hey chap, that's a GS brother. Hey, hey, GS gang. But yeah, look, this button right here, you just push that one. And then we can go for roads and then you can look at dynamic, which is the sharper one. Enduros like off-road and rain. And you can customize these as well in the settings now i've not i'm not going to do a deep dive on this one right now today um but i can do if you want a deep dive video i have done one uh, on my old xr which is very very similar you know I'm sure she's gone to a, a good owner um but if you do want a deep dive on the system let me know 
Now everything in terms of you know the layout's really easy to use. Everything's just obviously at your your thumb tips, I suppose. But yeah, she's gorgeous, easy to use. It's a bit quiet for the horses here. There we go. Get past them. So yeah, everything's at your at your thumbs, nice and easy to use. The cruise control is just over there. Indicators here and everything. There's your your fogs. Obviously, we've got the SOS on this one, right? Emergency call if we need to. Um, not a bad little thing to have on there as well, of course. You know, added safety feature. But this bike has got everything you can think of. Look at them views. Oh. Beautiful. Right, so let's move on to handling then. Now, I mentioned it's got a 19-inch wheel at the front, 17 at the rear. And, of course, we've got the Brembo. So all of that works really well. Gives you lots of confidence, right? Now here we've got some nice twisties and I want to kind of make sure we've got a little bit of distance. Not that I'm going to be going crazy. One, it's not my bike and two, we don't need to. But I just want to show you just how nimble this bike is, right? So just staying on the outside so we've got good visibility. All you've got to do, a tiny bit of counter steer and she tips in. Tiny, tiny bit. A little bit of counter steer again and she tips in. Now I get to ride quite a few bikes doing what I do, of course, and Although this bike weighs 265 kg fully fueled, plus you've got me on top of it, this bike is so agile, you know, they really, really hide all of the weight to the low down of the bike. And it just, it's just begs belief, honestly, beggars belief. It's so, so easy to nip around. Get around a cyclist. But yeah, honestly, handling is absolutely superb. It feels so agile, even though it is a big bike, right? So that's a real plus. Now, I guess the majority of the people that are going to have this, some might do proper off-road, absolutely. Uh, we can't cover that today. But for everyday road riding, she's awesome. And even in town, which will do some kind of slower sections up ahead as well, really, really, really good. Really easy to manage. Some might think, you know, big bike, heavy bike, scary. But honestly, she's not. She's absolutely gorgeous. Now, some people take these on tracks as well. Obviously, I can't comment what they're like on a track, although I have seen them on a track before. Um, it is very much that bike. It's that kind of jack of all trades. Of course, yeah, she's not really a, a sporty road focused machine. But if you wanted to do, you know, off-roading and if you wanted to do road and if you wanted to do a bit of touring, then this is a bike that can do it all, honestly, with ease, in absolute comfort. Absolute comfort. And I guess to mention some of its competitors, that's only fair. Of course, you've got things like um, Multistrada. Uh, you've got KTM Super Adventure range as well. I've done a review on the um, Super Adventure S as well, if you wanted to check that one out after this. And they're all priced quite similar. I guess, yeah, the BMW is going to be at the pricier end. Um, but I do think you get the value out of it. I mean, then again, the Multistrada's up there as well, right? Um, but I do think you get the value out of this. You know, the quality is absolutely superb. And I can really tell the difference when I switch between bikes because trying a few, you get to see just where the money is put, you know. And BMW really invest in the quality of their bikes and their systems. <laughs> Let's get a bit of air in here. Hot stuff. I literally run hot all year round, which is awesome in winter because I'm never really cold. But um, yeah, for test rides. <laughs> When it's colder outside, it gets steamy up in here. So yeah, overall fit, finish and quality then, and ergonomics, absolutely spot on. And the handling, yeah, really, really good. It's very much, you know, a confidence-inspiring machine. Tons of grip. You feel like you could really chuck this around. Um, and I would love to do an off-road experience one day. <coughs> Time for this. Um, maybe someone can arrange that and uh, we can do a video on it. <coughs> BMW. Uh, but we shall see. You know, we shall see. Until now, let's just do the road stuff. So I'm hanging a left here into Poynings. This is a nice little route, okay, because here we get to go through some kind of not so good roads, loads of a mixture of conditions here. You know, it's wet, muddy, you name it. Um, and obviously the surface on occasions is not awesome either. Let's just turn that off. Chill the air a little bit. Then clouds gathering again. <laughs> get out of here, get out of here. Yeah, like even here where it's kind of mucky, you really feel like you get tons of grip. I'm not going to push it. I don't want to be that guy that says it and then something happens. <laughs> but, you know, you do feel like it's very much stuck to the ground. And that's exactly what you want. That's exactly what you want. So look, through here then, just to kind of show you what she's like at a town-like environment, lower speeds. So we're at 
just over 2,000 RPM in third gear and she's so well behaved and I think any lower than that and yeah she'd start to kind of complain a little bit but look how good the fueling is look at that absolutely awesome now of course you can go much lower than that I'm going to let this car go past me actually because it looks like they're getting a bit impatient so and you go It is only a 33 year, so I don't actually want to go much quicker than that. But anyway, yeah, so town riding then and fueling, really, really, really good. She's so well behaved and the riding position as well, it's such a commanding position, you know, you really see absolutely everything. Now, of course, you've got adjustment in the screen there as well. You can kind of change the positions. But yeah, absolutely love the ergonomics. Thank you, thank you. So yeah, if you're going to use this for a bit of a jack of all trades bike and a bit of commuting here or there, yeah, absolutely awesome, right? Now you've got a whopping, whopping 30 litre tank and I think four litres reserve. Um, you know, it's hard to comment on range, right? Because I reckon you can easily get 200 out of this. Easy, easy, plus more. Um, but it's going to depend on your riding style and conditions as well, right? But yeah fill her up and yeah you can go a long way that is for sure and it opens up here a little bit this is national just going to give you a bit of beans i'm going to close that up nothing crazy but look how easy she picks up right absolutely awesome and the suspension is so comfortable oh man in comparison to mine and some of the other bikes i've reviewed recently this is like it's like sitting on the most comfortable sofa ever and I must admit I've got my heated seat on as well so um, yeah it's a little bit toasty but I love it it's actually really comfortable uh, but yeah absolutely beautiful and the way the engine picks up it's just effortless even from really low down and your red line's right up at 9000 okay but you're never ever ever going to struggle for power on this bike that I can tell you you are not yeah, let's just get into this 20. But yeah, the power is just phenomenal, honestly. It's so, so good. You're never going to be wanting for more, that I can tell you. Let's just get this right down. Always slip you around here. Ben knows. <laughs> Always mention it. But yeah, she tips in so well. So, so well. But yeah, power-wise, you know, yeah, look, 134 horsepower, right? And 143 newton meters of torque. It's an absolute freight train of torque and power and the way that they've done it they've managed to just basically make a bike that can do it all the way through the rev range it'll pick up from low down no drama at all you can see how low i took it then um and it'll rip it'll rip strongly all the way from three all the way up to pretty much just under the red line which is where it makes its peak power i think at 8750 it makes 134 break but yeah absolutely phenomenal engineering and as i say the way that they've hidden all of the weight low down absolutely awesome now this may or may not be underwater around here i don't know i've not been down here in a while but in the winter months you know, it's just a puddle <laughs> but in the winter months sometimes this is half river um there you go so you can see but yeah it's good so yeah that kind of cross-country riding experience then and town riding is going to be awesome for you you know the the faster country lanes absolutely brilliant plenty of power when you need it <laughs> look at that tiny twist of the wrist and she just springs into life what a cracking bike honestly man i'm definitely definitely going to get a gs one day i haven't got the money or the room for one right now but i'm definitely going to get one because it's that bike that just does it all right now bearing in mind we're in the road setting as well if i push the rider mode put it into dynamic because we've got dynamic suspension and ride by wire this is where it's going to put it into its sporty mode all right because it already picked up well and now yeah it really sharpens up the throttle there which is a good point actually i want to show you the rain mode not because you know it's anything super exciting but what i want to show you is the way it delivers the power okay so it was very little in dynamic if i use rain it was more forgiving there of course it takes off right because she's a big burly twin but it wasn't as urgent 
and of course you've got super clever traction control systems on this bike thank you and lean sense of ABS because you've got six axis IMU as well so everything works together the throttle control the traction control everything is lean sensitive and everything is state of the art let's be honest you know and of course that dual channel ABS as well and linked braking so even if you slammed on the front brake or slammed on the rear brake it can independently brake any one of them which is pretty cool right good to know Here's a good one, I love it. Well, I always get stopped here anyway, but look at this fueling, right? Just nipping along, first gear. Look at that, look how low it is, under 2,000 RPM. So smooth, absolutely beautiful. Right, can we safely get past? I think we can, lovely. Some more air again. Now we might well get rained on in a minute so what i want to do is move on to some other tests that we can do like braking okay so of course you've got brembo set up um big burly discs as well so we just take her up to 40 and then on the anchors <laughs> yeah no drama whatsoever i don't want to go too loud here actually so we've got horses around let's just get past them So there's none poking their heads out around here. Yeah, right. Just another quick one then. When it opens up down here. Nothing crazy. But just to show you how capable they are. Wow. Now I could go much harder than that and there's no intervention, no ABS that came up or anything like that. And that was on an incline. Now bearing in mind this is a heavy bike as well, right? This isn't some lightweight machine that we're just chucking around. So the braking is absolutely spot on. Really, really good. Tires give you excellent grip. Handling's good, comfort's good and power is awesome as well. Now of course you've got preparation there for the nav units and lots of people use them but don't forget you've got bluetooth connectivity on here as well and with the bmw connected applications what you can do is get everything set up on your phone get your phone connected you can have audio for communications you can have audio for music you can have turn by turn navigation as well so that's a really big plus right because if you're planning your adventures you want to go touring it's nice to know you've got all that kind of prep in there I'm not saying it can replace a proper comm setup those are a bit different but you know you've got lots of options with this bike lots of options let's take her out of that way mode put her back into road now i like that because everything works together like i mentioned you've got the dynamic suspension working for you as well this is that kind of perfect everyday mode a bit of space Quick shifter. Oh. Yeah, <laughs> that wasn't even going for it full pelt. Not at all. So I covered pricing on the walk around. Now, one thing I just can't stress enough if you're buying this bike is just to get the TE version. Now, I know it costs more, but by the time you add up all of the specification and all the extras that you get on the TE, it's just so worth it and you know if you're looking to kind of keep the bike only for a few years and move it on people are pretty much only going to want a te version anyway so it's definitely the one that i would choose um of course the color wise i mentioned as well rally is awesome if you're going to have that kind of rally off-road theme but if i was buying one i'd probably go for the triple black personally um, and of course you've still got the 40th edition that you can get at the moment as well um you would have seen some of those on the walk around um, but you know they're pretty awesome i think they're a fantastic range of colors um, worth mentioning as well on the color front you can go if you want to kind of get the price down a little bit more you can just go for the basic gray okay and i think if you do that then the bike comes in at i think eighteen thousand seven hundred, right so 
you've got some options to choose from. It doesn't have to kind of break the bank. It doesn't have to be a 21 grand bike. Right, now gearbox, guys. I mentioned it's a six-speed. Of course, it's one down, five up. And of course, you've got a slip and assist clutch on it, basically, and a quick shifter as well. And it works really, really well. Um, I will say that if you're going to do the quick shifter, probably save it for a higher RPM um, to get that absolute, you know, belting change. I actually quite like to shift in these manually. Hey, chap. But it's nice to know you've got the options there and it actually all works really really well i'd go as to say you know faultless really let's be honest you know it's not a light touch sometimes you do have to kind of not whack it in there but you know purposefully shift but you want that with this bike right you want rugged and durable oh dear what's happened here uh -oh. let's just start up a little bit make sure everything's all right go around Dear. A bit of a prank, wasn't it? Yikes. So, right, gearbox and everything then, absolutely awesome. Comfort great, handling great, engine great, electronics great. Um, lighting is something I can't exactly show you right now, but I have used them before. And of course, it's a full adaptive LED setup on there. They work so, so well, really, really good. And of course, with these as well, you've got the uh, daytime running lights and the spot lamps on here as well. And I've used all of these things on my XR as well. And you can literally light up the night. <laughs> okay, think country roads. You can light them all up. You whack them all on. Absolutely awesome. Just don't forget to turn some of them off when you get back on the road. <laughs> I must admit, I do love that screen. It's absolutely awesome. I do kind of somewhat miss that on my current bike, but. The bike I've got at the moment, the ZH2, is just, you know, chalk and cheese, really. It's not really needed. Right, so up here, we'll do a tiny bit of dual carriageway, and then back to Chandler's. We might have just done it in time before it tips it down. <laughs> Look at that. Saver. Yeah, there's lots of traffic right but easy easy to accelerate and get up to speed on this GS so so good 1254 box of beauty just effortless move over well, the cruise control super quickly flick it across to on and hit set there you go super super easy now this one doesn't have the adaptive cruise control like the rt and i've done a full review on that bike if you want to see that one after i'll link it perhaps but this works really well and you can accelerate and decelerate all from here but i'm just going to turn that off then we're going to move over back on again Done. Nice and easy. I mean, yeah, if you're going to do touring on this bike, there's probably not many better, let's be honest. It is so, so comfortable. Excellent position. Seat is brilliant. All the toys, all the bells, all the whistles you can think of, really. I can't really think of much you'd want to add. And if you're getting the TE version, you're going to get it all anyway, right? Right, we're going to come off here then and back to the garage. Beautifully smooth, quick shifter down. Look at that, absolutely gorgeous. And it was at this point that my GoPro died, never to be switched on again. Rest in peace, brother, you'll be missed. But that's okay, as I was moving on to the final thoughts section anyway. So overall, it's hard to fault the GS Adventure. Yes, it's on the pricier side, however, you get a truly excellent vehicle with high quality components and a machine that can literally tackle everything in its stride with the rider in sublime comfort. The handling is incredible and it defies logic based on its size and weight. BMW truly worked some magic on the chassis. The engine is a boxer belter with huge torque on tap and a seemingly limitless power band helped in part by the shift cam technology and the electronics are state of the art as is the suspension. I would definitely recommend getting the TE version of this machine to get the very best experience available. 
The rally trim adds that extra level of coolness and that's instantly recognizable on the road. But if the rally trim doesn't float your boat, I can highly recommend going for the 40th edition or the triple black versions. I will see if I can arrange for some off-road action on a GS in the future. However, as a jack of all trades for the road, the GS is an absolute winner. Shout out to Chandler's BMW for lending me this machine for review. Contact details for them and Ben are in the description. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section below. And if you enjoyed this video, feel free to give it a like because that really helps the channel. And if you enjoyed this content, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you know when new videos go live. Some links to other cool videos are on your screens now. So thanks very much for watching. And as always, stay safe, have fun, and I'll see you on the next one.